Hey guys, how you doing? Welcome back. Um, remember this handful of guitar necks and these fingerboards I got? Well, I did an episode called Assembly Line. Let me get this out of the way before they spaghetti all over the place like drill pipe on the junk pile drilling rig in the panhandle of Texas. Um, but you remember I, I, I did an episode called Assembly Line and I'm going to give you a link up there where we put these necks together with the idea that if you're doing um, several guitars, you might save time on setup and cost and things by blowing a few of these out. So the next step in these is to get a fingerboard on here, which involves taking these dowels down and uh, doing some sanding work on the neck. So I'm gonna show you how to do this. We're gonna put this together now. I got a lot going on in the background here i have amy verdon who does a lot of festivals and stuff um, she's either in new york or uh, mississippi or god knows where she at is where she's at today but i just got a notification she's showing us uh some artwork in a park in new york city so hey amy that's you in the background and i appreciate um the stuff you film and i certainly appreciate what you do for north mississippi hill country blues and the propagation of that into the future Okay, let's get the housekeeping out of the way right away. Uh, don't forget to give me a like if you like the video. Uh, if you don't, I don't know what's wrong with you. Uh, anyway, there's a million choices or two billion or something on uh, YouTube and you pick mine to dislike, really? Get out. Uh, anyway, don't forget to subscribe. My subscriber uh, total keeps creeping up about 100 a month. I like that. Uh, appreciate those of you that do watch me, I love your emails because it gives me ideas on the episodes and the questions. I love giving you shout outs. Now, speaking of shout outs, I want to talk to you about Voodoo Vinyl in Lancaster, California, cultural capital of the world, Lancaster, California. They've got a great alfalfa there, new fair, alfalfa festival, county fair and festival. I mean, this is big time stuff. You're going to see uh some of that evidence of that in my background today on the do not covet area but voodoo vinyl i stopped in there the other night and what do you know they had a couple of vinyls from texas go longhorns uh blues artist lightning hopkins now these are awesome albums um everest records Whenever they recorded stuff, they usually caught the people live, and there's usually some narrative on there. You'll pick up a lot from the narrative, but let's pick this up a little bit. Yeah, so today's music selection is Everest Records, Lightning Hopkins, and it's from the Folk and Jazz Music Archive. Um, can't beat either one of these. Do not covet these if you can get them i would get them uh, but that's our music shout out lightning hopkins texas blues man now all that said let's get to the bench and i'm going to show you how to get a fingerboard on here which is the next step in making these necks all right guys we're at the bench we're going to clean this up i kind of want to show you here's them four necks we built out uh, we're going to cut these off, uh, get this nice and smooth, and then we're going to pick through these fingerboards. Got a nice selection of fingerboards here. Uh, a couple of these guitars are going to go to festivals. I got one to build for a friend, and then I might just end up with one myself. We'll see, but again, this is going to be about uh, getting these necks ready and nice and smooth here and shaping the back and the neck and everything getting it right and then addressing any uh, grooves or unlevel spots we got here I'm gonna show you a trick there uh, but while we're here just to show you I'm not lying there's today's music shout out Lightning Hopkins and yeah I got that high fidelity uh, stereo thing going on right there so oh I know people love this so let's zoom in on the do not covet area. Let's take a look at what we got here. Now I told you about Lancaster, California before. 
uh, and the Alfalfa Festival in Lancaster, California. See that? That's my Pindle Poem Jelly. Did you think that I can't can stuff and win stuff at the uh, Antelope Valley Fair? Are you crazy? Of course I did. Now, if you don't believe that, you're probably weird and you probably will covet my Flash Master camera. I don't even want to know what that's all about. What else we got here? Oh, look at all these bone blanks I just got in. Look at all them for uh, doing knots. I'll be needing some of these for this area right here. Uh, yeah, Voodoo Vinyl, again in Lancaster, California. That's where I got the zoom over here. Lightning Hopkins stuff, remember that? Hey, to my friends at Voodoo Vinyl. And then, um, ooh, look at that. That's a 1976 Mississippi house plate. Do not covet this stuff. All right, let's whip this around. We're on, while we're on the do not covet part, oh, yeah, that's not earthquake proof in California, but do not covet my collection of Camacho boxes. Now, um, I haven't sorted them right there out yet, um, but you want to remember, I need all of these. I can't give any away, and Camacho boxes is not free you see that it says right there on that giant Camacho box is not free so do not covet my Camacho box collection do not find yourself in a sinful way or you know what I'm gonna have to go Jesus on you here with this holy Bible box Ooh, look at that you like that yeah me too no. all right let's get these out of the way we're gonna have to sort through and pick some of those but i always got a nice selection of fingerboards there and now we're gonna pick one of these out and kind of figure out what it is we need to do and get the rest of these out of the way so let's do that pick these out of the way and we'll focus on one here again i'm ill prepared um but these are just rough right out of glue up from the last episode. Let me get these nut blanks out of the way as well. Um, but what we're going to start doing here is these dowels have come through. And I'm going to want to cut those off and get them nice and smooth like so. That's pretty easy to do. And then this is all belt sander work right here. We're going to end up taking this down and rounding this radius off here and doing the same thing here. And you can see that this is a little crooked here. So we'll draw a line across here. And that way when we start doing this on the belt sander, which I'll show you how to do, that we get that all leveled out. But while we got this turned over now, I am going to just take my saw here. I don't want to dig in. this. That's why these flat saws are nice because... You don't want to hold it at an angle like this and start digging in and making grooves, but just hold it flat like that, and there you go. Now, one of the things I want to tell you about here is every once in a while, you'll get an area here that's not smooth, um, and you don't want this being crumpled and messed up when you start putting on your, your uh, fingerboard here, or you're going to have a gap down in here. So, uh, one of the things you want to remember is that sawdust can be your best friend. Okay, let me show you a couple of tricks here. First off, here's another one of those necks. Now, if I want to use some filler right here that I'm going to make myself, what kind of wood do you think I'm going to want? Maybe this would stick to itself the best. So, um, while I'm working on the belt sander, you'll notice that there's a pile of stuff building up here. And you notice that I always have... A plethora of tins of one type or another so all I got to do is take this and this potty knife right here and go like that and what do you know I have all kinds of medium to mix some glue in with to make my putty now I told you about this trick the last time how many times do you spend getting your glue off the shelf and shaking it like this Shake it like a Polaroid picture. Anyway, if you if you 
store it like that in an upside down mason jar it's always ready to go so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take some glue and make a, uh, uh, some sawdust and make a little paste and we'll have a quick look at what that looks like so I've got a piece of a, a box here it's definitely not a Camacho box and look at how that glue runs right out because I stored it upside down see look at that drops right in there close that lid wipe that off put that right back in the upside down jar got my bacon flavored toothpicks not really bacon flavored but you know and then I got this tin over here of this you know what bothers me most when people like grab a big chaw red man and they go like this and they go like this and they let it all over the ground and then they got this little tiny bit that they put in between their cheek and gum it's like what's that all about i noticed that was phony when i was a little kid but anyway i'm getting way off out in the weeds here but i just take this and i stir this around like so until i get me some wood putty and then if necessary if i got a spot here i can put that on there and let it dry and level it out the first thing I'm going to do before I do that is take this to the belt sander and make sure that this is nice and smooth so let's have a look at that all right the first thing we want to do remember is get the belt uh, cleaner and get everything off the belt because when the belt is clean you're going to be able to start watching where the buildup is so you're going to look at this every once in a while and figure out there we are that much has got to come off you can kind of see what's happening here so the first thing I'm gonna do is get this kind of flat I'm also going to use the edge nobody wants to run their finger up and down this and get sliver so we're going to kind of start rounding this off like so we're going to get this top right here where everything goes and now we're going to take and build this radius out and match these two so I'm going to turn the volume down but kind of show you what's happening almost forgot to tell you for the hundredth time you always want to use see the radius or the the curve here you always want to make sure that your radiuses and curves match there because if you've got something else going on then you're fighting the belt sander but if you match those curves and radiuses with your work you see right here that's got to come down a little bit because there's a gap right there why is there a gap right there because that's built up see so when that starts going away i can watch very clearly and as soon as this starts making contact with the belt the belt will do a lot of work for you as long as your radiuses match the radius of your belt so again back to reality let's turn this thing on Now you can tell from what picked up on the belt there there wasn't that much pressure being put on and this feels nice and smooth so we're going to figure out what happened when we go to put that fingerboard on there. a couple little tricks here remember i got my i got my tight bond neck sawdust putty over here always ready to go at all times remember that okay nothing better than this um it matches color um, and it's going to stick really well now if I'm going to use this of course I'm going to make sure I take my flat saw and do a couple of scores around here and I'm not going to do that just yet but that will help that stuff stick now what I want to make sure is is first off 
you see there's a couple pieces of that blue painter tape there I'm gonna get rid of those as much as possible get rid of that and then I can take a flat edge preferably one that's marked with the metric system and I can take it across there and see is there anything sticking up do I see a gap right there no that looks pretty good and then finally hey you remember this graphite uh, bar that I have that I used to make the Reuben Lacy uh, church dedication plaque rubbing well that works out pretty good here I want to make sure that I got a flat spot on it already which I've done and then I can just rub this across here like this you see that and it looks to me from doing that that spot right there is a little high which makes that spot a little low now if it was really bad I could take some of this and put this right here and spread it out like so and use a putty knife and mash it down like that you see that then I would let that dry and come back with some emery cloth and knock this down until I got that nice and flat so we'll let that dry if that was the case uh, take our emery cloth come back sand it down and then take it back to the belt sander then one more time on this but this graphite stuff especially when it's on there and you're sanding on the belt sander this stuff disappearing evenly again you want to have a nice flat spot there tells you that this is flat you really need this to be flat gotta love that lightning Hopkins now we're about ready to glue on a fingerboard right wrong a couple of things we need to do first I told you if I've told you this before you don't glue this on right here um, because if you do your scale is going to be all wrong you got to figure out am I going to cut a notch in here so I can maybe use a bolt with uh, acorn nuts just we do a little slot right there like another fret and then chisel this out that's that wide or are we just going to cut this flat off and then on the back side of that of course this part would be gone right here I'm going to put an X right there I'm using this one so you can kind of see what's going on and then remember all my bone blanks yeah I'm going to use a bone nut it's got to be cut down but I do know that I'm going to use this so that right there I would cut this off right here now where's my nut going to be on here well I don't want it where it's dropping down like that I want it up in the flat spot where it's nice and flat that's where it'll start um, and, and this is a decisive point because this right here is where your scale measurement starts going this way remember I used 25 and a half scale um, I don't want to tilt it back like this because then the pressure of the strings causes this kind of stuff but I want it to be nice and flat and when I know where that is I'm just going to put a line right there like so now doesn't matter what's up here how long it is or whatever again the scale starts at the edge of the knot that's closest to the bridge that way so now I'm going to take this little um, square that I have and I'm going to pick up that line and I'm going to make sure that that's nice and dark on there so I can see it like so that is where my scale line is going to start so first thing I want to do is I think I'm actually going to use this one I think that looks pretty cool but the contrast here really helps uh, I think you can see that better so I don't need this part right here let me see what's in the camera we'll move this over so I'm going to take my flat saw and I'm just going to use the fret slot to cut that off I don't think you need to see me do that all right there we go I'm going to want to take that to the belt center and make sure that that is nice and smooth if that's wavy then the bone isn't going to sit up against it and I'm have a mess but anyway that right there will go up against that line that we cut you see there so that's where that will go okay so we know our nut is we got that line everything's straight here we're ready to glue right no wrong 
um, there's a lot to think about here. Um, and the first thing is 25 and a half scale. Where do we want things to end up? What if we're using a coffee can? What if we're using a Camacho box? What if we're using a license plate kit? Well, all that's going to matter. So what I want to do is I've cut this yardstick down. This is a fancy yardstick. It's from Beverly Hills. I've shown you this before. But I'm going to put that right on the edge of that line where my nut goes and where my fingerboard starts. Okay, you see that? I'm trying to get this in the camera. And then 25 and a half inches is where my bridge is going to need to be, right? So, I'm going to mark this off. Now you notice I got an extra neck here because I'm going to cut my tailpiece, whatever I want, and that'll end up being an underboard for neck later or something. But that right there is where my bridge is going to have to be. You with me? Now let's say I'm going to use a license plate guitar frame kit. I just want to make sure that I know which side is what and which way the guitar player works. Uh, right or left handed and then uh, I got my blues lady California license plate now let's set this on here we know that roughly it would sit there and the holes for the thing would go there and that that looks pretty good um, we're not marking it off anything finally but do you really think I want to bridge right here no I probably want it back there right so it matters where all this stuff is so if I want the bridge back there, I can kind of set this up like so. You see what I'm saying? And then the neck would come through here. Um, there's got to be some drop down. And then the fingerboard, we've already cut this off. We know where it goes up at the top up here where the nut is. Let me get this supported right. It's all there. Well, do I want this much fretboard coming down? into the no I really don't I may want a little bit of it to come here I may want it to end right there can you see it so I'm going to mark off where I want all this stuff to be it moved a little bit I want it to go back that way and that way I can make some decisions about what needs to be done with my fretboard I think I'm going to let this I don't want that letter covered up and so that being there and all things said I think my fretboard needs to end about right there. So I'm going to cut that off before I glue this on and make sure everything's right. Now, on the other side of the coin, if I wanted to use a Camacho box, a 60 by or a 60 by 6 like I usually use, I'm going to end up with my bridge about right there this is the right way of course I peel all this off and I'm gonna do the same thing if my bridge needs to be way down there well look I got a lot more neck sticking out of this thing and I can actually use all of the frets and have it end up over the top of the box right there and that those are things I want to know before I start coffee cans you're getting into a whole new world because you've got something very small down here in this whole neck. This fingerboard isn't even long enough. So see one of those videos. I'll try to give you a link to a coffee can video right up there. But you want to know what kind of box you're using. Don't start gluing these on until they're specific to the guitar you want to build. So without giving any secrets away about specific guitars, I have already figured out I'm going to use this lace wood neck. And I'm going to use the bone bridge. So I'm going to have to cut that off right there. That's where my scale starts. And I'm going to be able to use all the frets. So I'm going to cut everything off at this last fret. I do not want a fret right at the edge of anything. Because something happens, that fret's going to knock off. Everything's going to chip off right there. So this will be my final fret. I'll have this much space till the end of the fretboard. But now i got to take my saw and cut this off here and this off here. Now I'm going to take my, my fine file and make sure everything is smoothed out and 
both ends. Remember the nut is going to fit against there so that's a big deal. I want to make sure that everything is not chipped out. I don't have anything up against here that's going to mess me up like so. And then I can start thinking about glue and always remember the closer together the frets are the closer it is to the body. I would hate to see somebody glue one on upside down and then these are always wider. So let's say I don't pay attention to this up here and I put this right at the edge and I'm not paying attention down there well my frets are all going to be crooked. So I'm going to take a look at where the center of this is if I'm smart I'll measure it out. I'll put a mark there. Of course how do we do that? Well you know we got this template we keep using this one over and over so I set it at the edge there. It tells me that the center is there. Then of course I just measure this put a mark in the center, do that on both ends, do that down here as well, and then I'm ready to glue. Now, are we going to clamp directly to this? Of course we're not. We're going to put another piece of board up here or something, and we're going to make sure that our clamps have that painter's tape or something on there so they're not digging in and leaving divots and stuff. So board over the top, clamp underneath, and make sure that your clamps are protected. Okay let me catch you up here again. End of the fingerboard sits there. Nut starts there. We got a nice straight line there. We know that the width between the frets is the furthest away from the bridge. That's going to sit there. I made a mark down here where my fingerboard is going to end. I took my square, made a mark there, then I took my template that helps me find the center made a mark there and one up there and then I also measured my fretboard found the center but remember this is going to be cut down but what's important now is the center so I can line up the center mark there and where are we at there there we go you see that mark and now I can think about putting the glue on and knowing that everything is straight with the world. All right, now that I'm ready, I have a piece of wood here. Um, it's got scale marked off on it, but I use this for a lot of different things. It's going to be my clamp board up here. Um, I have a couple of these little clamps that I'm going to use one on each end. They're, they're ratchet clamps. They release quickly. I'm, of course, going to want to use these to do the final uh, glue up and make sure that uh, they're on overnight but now it's just a matter of flipping this over doing a final check to make sure that nothing got on here if you get a piece of something on here while we're talking and doing our thing it's really going to mess you up so give it the last inspection take your tight bond out after it's been upside down and the nice part about it is you got these marks you know where you're going to end up like so. Isn't it exciting watching me put glue on? Of course again make sure that you don't get this flipped around somewhere and you go gluing this on and your fingerboard is on backwards. So we're just going to put a skunk stripe down the middle of this knowing that we're going to have um, some to cut off on the edges. Like so. We'll just run that down there like that. There we go. Now it's flowing like so. Close that. Get the slop, put it back in upside down. Get a wet finger and just stir that around a little bit. I don't need this stuff jumping out, smearing all over the edges and stuff. Now you want to remember some glues like Gorilla Glue, that stuff expands. So if you're going to use Gorilla Glue, you kind of want to figure out, have some experience with that. I want you to notice right here, there's a couple little glue clumps in there. I don't want those, right? I'm just going to make sure that everything's nice and smooth here, like so. There we go. And last call. Make sure that everything's right. That center line sits right up there. Now you can tell that this is a little sloppy so I'm going to get one end down first right on the line 
and tighten it down like so. The other one, make sure that line's there as well. Right in the middle there, they all line up. And I can tighten that one up like that. I'm going to give it just a couple minutes. And then it'll get sticky. I can wipe off a little bit of excess. And then I'm going to take, pull these off one at a time. And use my big clamps, a number of them, to get this set up overnight. Okay, I wanted to catch up with you one last time. Before I put these big clamps on, you can tell that I've moved this one. And I've moved this one. So I know um, before I start moving around, I'm always going to keep these things stable. So I'm going to put this clamp here like so. And I got those clamps holding. And then I can start putting my big clamps on and move these around as necessary. Alright, there's the last clamp, and as I've been going, I've been making sure that these are all equally tight and you can never have enough clamps. Now I'm going to take my trusty election pencil, yeah, winner, and a piece of paper towel, and I'm going to flip this upside down, and then I'm going to take and get that excess glue off of there using the pencil to push through like so if I need to. We don't want a lot of clumping and staining and all that kind of stuff going on there like that. Sometimes it helps if this is a little bit wet too but the crisper this edge is right here remember we're gonna have to cut this off so if I do that with a bandsaw I don't want to have some hard edge with the band so it's jumping around so I want to make sure that that is real nice. Remember if you don't have any water do what grandma used to do get your snot rag out and spit on it and get your hair nice while you're in the middle of church. There we go. I'm going to do the other side. That won't be too exciting so you don't need to watch that. All right, there we go. That looks good. And so we're going to flip this back over. Put your clamps on right. It'll sit nice and flat like so. And then we come back and check on it in the morning. Do not get ahead of yourself and start figuring out, well, if I can, it's been two hours or something, so I can start doing my thing. Because if this isn't solid, it'll move. And then you got a mess. You might as well have done nothing. So I will see you in the morning and we'll get ready to trim this down. All right, guys, it is the next evening. I just rolled in from the city. You may see a suit coat and a tie pop in, but you know what? When glue is dry, glue is dry. And I told you we're going to get these clamps off and have a look. So let me pop these off quick. Of course, I'm going to hang them up as I go so I don't have a mess of a bench to begin with the next day but I'll, let me catch up with you in a minute and by the way it's never too late for some more of that lightning hopkins background music all right last clamp you guys are going to see what i see sorry to reach in front of you but oh well you're going to see what i see when i see it all right look at that Got a little bit of blue tape there. Other than that, everything's clean. We can sand that off. Uh, but right now, we've got just about that much hanging off on each side. But other than that, everything looks pretty good. There's nothing significant there that we can't sand out or whatever. But uh, now there's a couple ways to do this. I'm going to get my blocks of wood out here. And... Uh, Again, I'm a little ill-prepared, but I kind of want to show you something um, and tell you about one of my bad experiences. You know these rosewood fingerboards? They're nice. They look good. And the wood is 
strong, but it can be a little brittle. So let me tell you what happened one time. I had one of my trusty flat pole saws, and it may have been a little bit old. And what you can do here to cut this off is you can take, lay it flat, don't put a lot of pressure down, but get your cut started. And then as you go, you just increase the angle like this. So this piece of wood here, this neck board, becomes the guide for your cut. You might also stand it up like this and find a way to clamp it and do both sides. Again, you just start off real gentle like this and then increase the angle of your cut. You can do it that way, and that's how I used to do it. But one time I was doing it that way, and I had one of these fingerboards on. And what do you know, it split out and cracked. And it ended up cracking. The glue held it together on the fingerboard, but it ended up having a crack up in here. And I couldn't let that loose, so I basically had to strip the fingerboard off the neck and start over. Um, since I've got a bandsaw and a scroll saw now, um, that's how I do it and I have a band in this way but if you're going to do it this way the best thing you can do is make sure that one of these is sharp and for just this just like you have one maybe for cutting your frets you don't do rough sawing and then tune, tune or turn the same saw to your finer stuff so I'm going to show you on the band saw how to cut this off and get it close and then we'll go back to our trusty friend the belt sander and again use our radiuses and the flat part of the belt to make this a really easy job. Okay guys, uh, I want to show you my setup here. I've got this adjustment that goes up and down. I want a little bit of room there but not too much. I don't need this real stiff. And I'm using the neck board as kind of a guide but I'm not pushing in so tight that we start cutting into the neck board. We don't want that. We just want to trim this edge of the fret board off that's sticking out. And I, remember, I've got this sewing machine uh, gas pedal down here so I can make this come on, cut slow, cut fast, do whatever I want to do. But I'm just going to guide this down and cut the rest of this off here like so. I may have to turn this around depending on how much room is in your shop. But it's pretty easy. Again, we don't want to see um, our fingers anywhere near this. Again, the, the sewing machine paddle works out good for that. But we don't want to see anything coming off of here. We're just going to so kind of watch this. and And there we go. There's a flyby. And um, you see it's not perfect. There's a little bit sticking up here, but now we're going to go to the belt sander and take care of all of this right here. All right, that looks pretty good there. Time to get on putting in some fret markers and some frets. Let's close this episode out. All right. Hey guys, ain't I pretty? <laughs> it don't matter. We ain't going to be dating anytime soon. Anyway, hey, we got uh, the fingerboard on this neck. Um, turned out pretty good. It's pretty simple to do if you got the right tools and some patience. Main thing is don't hurry it. I know that my, um, my abilities... Uh, really improved when I was able to do a scarf joint, uh, build necks and, and get fingerboards glued onto them, fret them and, and do all that kind of thing. So that really, if you can do that, it takes your cost down, your confidence up. So it's not a bad night when you can get something done, no matter how you're dressed, as long as you got some Lightning Hopkins going on in the background. So hey, thanks and I'll see you next time.